I decided to build a modern chair and this is what I came up with. Well, the next project is going to be something like this. Uh, we're planning on making a chair and haven't quite figured out how the backing is going to be on it. Uh, I got the idea for the legs. Um, but the back's a little bit iffy. Uh, not really sure how I want to do that, but we'll get started on it anyway. The first thing I start on is what I would call the spine of this chair. And this is going to require me to do a glue up with several 1x4s. When I did this glue up, I had no idea what I would be using this laminated piece for. And then it kind of struck me as, well, it might make a good uh, piece for a chair base. And so I decided to use it. But the interesting thing about this glue up is that it was done with twisted boards. And I glued it up first and then I trued the boards up. I decided to put five degree angles on the end. I made the cut on the miter saw best I could, and now I'll finish it up with my Japanese pole saw. Should work out fine as long as I keep the saw blade flush to the face. And here you can see I'm checking it with my square and it looks pretty good. This dimension here is how I will establish the height of the seat from the base of the chair. Now this is the seat and I want to put this spine right through the center of this seat. So I had to find the center positioning. And now I strike the, uh, the lines. Now I have to cut out a section of this seat for the spine to fit into. I would like to take this time to thank all my subscribers for subscribing to the channel and watching the videos and being a very big support to the channel. Thank you. Here you can see the section that I plan on cutting out for the uh, spine backing to fit into. Now we'll go over to the table saw and cut those lines. Next, I'll do the remainder of the cut using the bandsaw. I'm glad I did some cleaning and tune-up on my bandsaw because this thing cuts better than it has ever cut before. I'm very happy with it. Make sure you tune these up every now and then. Change your blade. Clean off your tires and make sure the blade is centered on your tire. Also, make sure your guides are set in the proper position.
Now I have the section cut out for the uh, spine back. And now I'll switch over to the process for making the legs. I'll use three one by fours, gluing two together and then offsetting one to create a lap. The lap joint will go against the seat of the chair. I'm somewhat curious as to how strong these legs will be. The one thing that concerns me is the possibility of racking. So I'll put dowels through the seat into these legs to help with the racking idea. But it may take a brace at the bottom of the legs for extra stability. There's one thing for sure that there's always plenty of sanding to do with these woodworking projects. It seems like you sand throughout the project. Now you kind of get an idea of how this chair is going to look once it's completed. Although I do have several more operations to the process before it will be done and quite a few steps to putting it all together. As you can see here, I really got that slot to almost a perfect fit, almost a little bit too snug, but it comes apart with a little work. I decided to put radiuses on the back part of the seat. I find it easiest to cut these types of radiuses using the bandsaw and then following up with sanding. You could use a disc sander, palm sander, or you could use their sanding station. My idea with the radiuses is to make sure that there are as many rounded edges as possible for extra comfort. I think the corners would be a discomfort. I'll attach these stops and supports to the spine back part of this chair and the seat will rest on these and I'll also be able to screw from the bottom and attach the seat to these stops so it'll be a secure connection. First I use a little glue and then I use the nailing gun, my brad nailer, to position the pieces and then I'll follow that up with drilling and screwing so it'll be a secure mount for the seat to rest on. Now to do the other side. I've already got revisions in my mind on how the seat rest should have been or how I would like it to be the next time around I have a, when I have a similar uh, project situation as this. I, I think I would like to go with a rod through the center of this back spine and then cut uh, pockets on the underside of the seat and let the seat rest on the rod that comes through and then the support would be hidden from the visual eye. But that's typical, that's how it goes and we'll have to incorporate something like that for the next project.
Now that I have the legs glued up and it's dry, I can drill the holes for the, the three quarter inch dowels that I'll use to strengthen the legs. What you're looking at here is a repaired seat. I made the slot for the spine back too long, so I decided to plug it with a square, and I gave it a contrasting color to make it more interesting. Now it's time to work on the back. I would like to put a slot on the back side of this backrest so it attaches to the spine backing and then I can glue the two pieces together. I'll make the cuts on the table saw first, which are a little bit sketchy, I know. Don't try this at home. I only have one surface, or half of the board surface, to actually ride on the fence, so I wouldn't suggest trying this at home. I took it nice and slow as to not move the board as it was gliding across the blade and also the blades not going all the way through so it's not really as dangerous as you might think I was able to get away with making these cuts and I'm very pleased with the way they turned out now to remove the material I'll use a Forstner bit on the drill press and remove as much material as possible cutting to the edge of my curve cut so that I can maintain a nice straight edge for the slot. Take mine that I set the stop on the drill press so that the Forstner bit would bottom out at the same spot on every cut. So that I have a pretty flush surface once I'm completed. Now to remove the remainder of the material using a chisel. This can be a lengthy process, but because this is extremely soft wood, it was a snap. I removed it in minimal time. I considered using a router with a flush cutting bit, but I chose to go with a chisel instead. Now to cut those dowels flush with the seat. Now to put some roundovers on everything so the edges aren't so sharp and aggressive to the touch. Now we can glue up the backrest to the spine or the backing of the chair. This is going to take plenty of glue and I'll make sure I put glue in the slot and on the backrest or the spine, the backing part of the chair, so that we have a good adhesion. I'll apply pressure by clamping this to the workstation here 
You'll see shortly. This turned out to be a really nice fit. I'm happy with the way this turned out. Now to clamp it all down. I'll use one pistol clamp and then I'll use my custom made hold fast. Now for the dowels on the face of the backrest. I'll put three dowels in and space them evenly so it has a nice aesthetic, but these will be holding the backrest on very secure. Now that the glue has dried, it's time to assemble the chair. This should be the last time I put these two pieces together because I plan on driving the screws from the underside to attach the two pieces together for the final time. Now it's time for the finish. I decided to go with a few coats of tongue oil. The back of the chair is cedar and the tongue oil will make this grain and the cedar pop and give it a nice warm glow. I'm thinking of adding a tent to the second coat for the other parts of the chair other than the back just to give that a little color, but I don't want too much color. I'll have to decide that later. 